Okay, so I'm just going to have a look at a few questions from the additional IGCSE math syllabus, all to do with functions. They're expecting us to understand things about domain and range, inverse functions, composite functions, absolute functions, um, and the idea between functions and inverses kind of graphically as well. Okay, so let's just check. Uh, we've got some ideas here. This idea about the range of a function goes to the domain of its inverse. The domain of a function goes to the range of its inverse. And we've got this idea about the inverse function being a reflection from the line y equals x. So here we go, e to the x and ln x inverse functions. And we can see that because they're reflected in the line y equals x. Um, okay, and let's just have a look at some uh, of the, the kind of basic questions about domain and range. For example, y equals e to the x. Well, if you want to flick back, this is the graph of y equals e to the x. You can see that actually x can be any value. So the domain for e to the x is real, but the range, if you look at this, it's always going to be positive. So the range is going to have to be greater than zero, because we can never actually get to zero. So we get domain real, range greater than zero. And then ln x, because it's the inverse, we just swap the domain and range. So therefore, the domain becomes x greater than zero, and the range becomes real. Uh, the other kind of function you get is like a, a fraction, so y equals 1 over x plus 2. In this one here, the domain, again, x can be real, uh, except for when x is negative 2, because we can't divide by 0. Uh, the range uh, is real, and again, y can't be 0. Now, if you want to understand why y can't be 0, basically see what happens. It is x gets really, really big, y gets 1 divided by a really big number, it gets closer and closer and closer to 0, but you never actually get to zero. You can't make this function zero. Um, so therefore, y is real, but y is not equal to zero. Uh, just a notational thing to be careful with. For some reason, additional maths uses this notation, f squared x, and it means f of f of x, i.e. a compound function. Um, just be careful with that. It doesn't mean f of x squared. Um, okay, so you can actually start looking at some sorts of questions you could be asked. So here we go, we've got absolute 3x minus 5 is equal to 3. Nice and easy to solve this one. First off, we just ignore the absolute value, 3x minus 5 is equal to 3. Or we just put our brackets around and do negative bracket 3x minus 5 is equal to 3. And then we solve that. Uh, the reason it's probably best to put the brackets in the negative rather than putting the negative straight over here is because if we have an uh, inequality, so you're putting the negative over here, we then need to flip the inequality because we're dividing by a negative. So it's best to do it this way around, and that stops you making that mistake uh, if there's an inequality here. Uh, it's also worth just mentioning about absolute x. It basically reflects um, the graph, um, the negative part of the graph on the x-axis. So for example, y equals x plus 2 absolute value. It's the graph of y equals x plus 2, and then we reflect the part that's negative uh, in the x-axis so we get something that looks like that. Okay, right, so here we go. Here's a past paper question. Um, let f of x equals root x minus 5. Find the domain and the range. Well, we can't square root a negative number. So if we bear that in mind, we're just going to get x must be greater than or equal to 5. It can be 5 because when we put 5 in here, 5 take away 5 is 0. We can square root 0. Um, and equally, because they've already written the square root, then we're only taking the positive answers. We're not taking the plus or minus, and therefore it can never be negative. And so therefore y is greater than or equal to 0. And we get the 0 when we put x is 5 in here. Okay, that's the first part. Uh, find the inverse, and then we, we put 2 into the inverse function. Um, so here we go. Here's the function. f of x equals root x minus 5. Just start by saying y equals root x minus 5. So x equals root y minus 5. We swap the x's and the y's because we're reflecting the line y equals x. So that reflects that, in effect, swaps x and y around. We then square, square both sides. So x squared equals y minus 5. x squared plus 5 is y. And therefore, the inverse function is x squared plus 5. And therefore, if we put in 2, so we do... 2 squared plus 5 is equal to 9. Okay, another question. Um, 
Okay, here we go. So root x plus 4 and uh, let's, well, domain and range. Well, they've actually told us what the domain is. In this case, it's greater than or equal to uh, negative 4 because we need to make sure that this uh, square root is always positive. So as long as x is greater than or equal to negative 4, it's always going to be positive or, or 0, and we can square root that. The range, um, same again, uh, because it's a square root, we're not going to get the negative. We've not got the plus or minus written there. So the range is greater than or equal to 0. So first one, g of f of 3. Easy way to do this is first off do f of 3. So basically put 3 into, into this function. That's going to give me root 7. And then I put root 7 into uh, g of x. So root 7 squared gives me 7. Okay, part B says find the inverse. So there we go, y equals root x plus 4 x equals root y plus 4, very similar to the last one. So we get x squared minus 4 is y. And therefore, uh, that's it. And there we go, x squared minus 4 is y. And then what's the domain and the range going to be? Well, uh, the range was y greater than or equal to 0. Therefore, the domain becomes x greater than or equal to 0. And then the range... Uh, well, the domain was x greater than or equal to minus 4, therefore the range is y greater than or equal to negative 4. Now, if you can look at the little sketch of the graph, you might be thinking, well, hang on, the x squared minus 4 equals y, that looks like this, but you're telling me the domain is only restricted for the positive values. And that becomes, it's because of this initial uh, function here, because this was restricted, the inverse is going to be restricted as well. So this is going to be my final answer. Okay, so let's have a look at the next one. So we're given some kind of function, um, 3 plus 1 over 2x minus 5. Find the inverse. Let's just do that. So same again, we just uh, swap the x's and the y's. This one's a bit more of a hassle. Uh, we had to, in effect, bring the 3 over here. So that becomes x minus 3. We then times by the 2y minus 5. And then I get this equation. Expand it all out. So I get all of this. And then trying to work to get anything with a y to one side and anything else to the other side. So I end up with 2xy minus 6y equals minus 14 plus 5x. I then factorize out the y. So I get 2y bracket x minus 3 equals minus 14 plus 5x. Divide by x minus 3. And divide by 2 as well. So I get y equals minus 14 plus 5x all over 2 bracket um, x minus 3. Okay, uh, I've just written this. This is an equivalent. You might have done this in a slightly different method, so you could get this answer as well. And then part D says, what's the geometrical relationship between f of x and the inverse? Um, that just means the reflection in the line y equals x. Okay, let's just have a look at, uh, I think, one more question. So first off, let's have a look at some functions. The range of g, um, probably best to actually just rewrite that so it looks like a normal quadratic. So there we go, we've got a half x squared minus a half. That's going to look something like that. It's going to touch the, the y-axis at minus a half. So therefore the range, y values have to be greater than or equal to negative a half, just from the graph. And it says, explain why f of g of 1 does not exist. Well, if I put g of 1 into this function, I get 0. And then I put 0 into the f function, I get 0 squared minus 2 over 0. I can't divide by 0, therefore the function doesn't exist. Okay, and then last one. It says, show that g of f of x equals you know, some function, where I need to find a, b, and c. So g of f of x... Well, this is f of x, so I need to put all of this function into every time I see an x in the g of x function. So I end up with all of that. So I've replaced x with this. Uh, it's just a case then of expanding out my brackets. Um, so I've used this idea of that if I'm squaring a fraction, I can square the top and square the bottom. I then expanded out the bracket. 
So I get this, x4 minus 4x squared plus 4, all over x squared. Take away 1, all over 2. I'm then going to uh, simplify this fraction. I've got an x4 over x squared. That gives me x2. x squared over x squared. That I'm just going to get left with the minus 4. 4 over x squared is 4 over x squared. Still got the minus 1. Still got the divide by 2. And then I've got it looking like this. I've got an x squared over 2 minus 4 over 2. 4x squared over 2 gives me 2x squared. And minus 1 over 2 gives me that. If I then tidy that up, I've got a minus 2 minus a half. So that's minus 5 over 2. And there we go. I've got a half x squared minus 5 over 2 plus 2 over x squared. And then very lastly, uh, the very last question is state the domain. So I look at this. Well, x can be any value apart from I can't divide by 0. So therefore, x is a real number, but x is not equal to 0.